Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing one of the sets I picked up during the Nordstrom anniversary sale, and that is going to be the Charlotte Tilbury Sunset Dreamscape Face and Eye Palette Set. We're going to be trying it on, of course, and I'm also going to be comparing to a few other palettes that I have that are similar. So if you want to see that, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. I always get really excited about the beauty exclusives for the Nordstrom anniversary sale. And of course, one of the ones that I had to pick up was this Charlotte Tilbury set. There also are a few other Charlotte Tilbury sets in the anniversary sale. I believe there's a couple skincare sets. There's a pillow talk set, which is amazing by the way. Highly recommend that one. I just happen to own already. <laughs> everything in that set so I couldn't pick it up but presentation fantastic and there's this one so this one is exclusive this color story has not come out before so I definitely had to pick this one up as far as the Nordstrom anniversary sale if you don't know how it works basically if you are a Nordstrom card holder you guys are able to shop the sale on different dates depending on the tier that you're on so log into your Nordstrom account online and it will tell you what date you can shop but if you are not a Nordstrom card holder you are able to shop this July 20th 28th. So let's take a look at the details of this set. I just love how they come decorated like this. You have the nice Nordstrom anniversary sale sticker telling you it's $75, but it is a $90 value. And then you have a cute exclusive ribbon because basically Charlotte Tilbury came out with this set exclusively for Nordstrom. Now what I will say, a lot of times in the past, the exclusive items from this sale do eventually go on to the retailer and they will re-release it sometimes with the different name. Sometimes they use the same name. Charlotte Tilbury has definitely in the past taken things from the Nordstrom sale, renamed them, and then sold them on her site. While this says right now it is limited and exclusive, I don't know if that's going to hold true. Now this is $75. One instant look in a palette is normally $75. So the deal here is you get a mini push-up lashes pillow talk mascara it says it's a $90 value I don't I don't know about all that you're getting this palette for 75 and basically a free mascara but anyways I mean I think these are awesome deals to begin with anyways because they really are all in one palette. Now online, major things I'm noticing, they're saying this is limited edition. Again, with Charlotte Tilbury, you can kind of never be too sure about that. And the shades in here, it does not specify whether or not they are pre-existing shades, but I mean, honestly, looking at the colors, nothing really is super unique, especially with these palettes as well. So let's take a closer look at the palette. She did just release a couple months ago these Look of Love palettes. So these guys had new packaging. For this release, she went back to her traditional packaging for the instant Look of Love palettes, which I really enjoyed. So this is made in Italy and it has a 30 a month shelf life. She also went back to the old layout here. So again, those last palettes that she launched, she actually pushed the highlight over here and then actually used her Airbrush Flawless Setting Powder right here, which I thought was an amazing move. I love that powder. I think that even made it a more versatile palette. So she did go back to the old layout of having two cheek colors and then pushing the highlight out here again. I want her to stay with the old layout, but I thought the colors here looked really pretty, really rosy. Is it still in the same family of the other ones? Yes, again, I will do comparisons. But first, I do want to apply them all to my face, create a look with this. I personally really, really love these palettes. I didn't start getting into them until the holiday season this past year, so I've really been into them for like six, seven months. And I find myself reaching for them a lot because they truly are very versatile palettes, so I was really excited about this. So the concept of this is you are supposed to kind of apply them in order. They all have numbers here, and you apply them on certain parts of your face. I always say this, do not feel limited to 
where you apply these. You can apply the colors wherever you want. When I was using one of these guys on vacation, you know, I was using the cheek colors on my eyes, creating monochromatic looks. So obviously you can do whatever you want. Don't feel limited. So you can see I don't have my concealer settling in right now. We'll fix that in a second, but first I do want to start off with the bronzer. Now this bronzer looks pretty light. I'm gonna compare it to my Filmstar Bronze and Glow in the shade Light Medium. So you can see they are different. This one is from the Instant Look in a Palette and this one is the Filmstar Duo. You can see the tones are very different. This one is a little bit cooler. This one has a touch more warmth. So, and they're pretty light on the skin, but let's see. So I'm gonna use from the Sonia G Kiyaki set. This is the classic face brush. So this bronzer isn't going to work as a bronzer for deeper skin tones. It's applied beautifully. Honestly, I feel like I don't have a bronzer that's quite this tone. Let me get in a little closer, actually. This is a bit different than the bronzers that I normally go for. It has a little bit of pinkiness in it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really pretty. I think it pulled prettier on my face than it did by swatch. So I like this. I think this is very, very pretty. As per usual, it blended on seamlessly. That's how this is looking. So we have the Swish color, which basically is supposed to go all over the cheek, and then you have the pop color. I'm going to use my Wayne Goss number two brush to apply this. So I'm gonna start off in the Swish color. The Swish color has a little bit of a sheen to it, but I really like this because it's a little bit more of a neutral rose. I feel like a lot of times she puts in more pinky blushes, something that has a brighter pop. So this is a really nice kind of neutral toned blush. So I'm very happy that she put this one. <gasps> I just applied way too much. Yeah, I went like that and didn't tap off my brush and look at that. <laughs> so use a light hand. This is quite pigmented and it looks a little bit dirty if you over apply. So at least if you have my skin tone, but you can see Charlotte Tilbury's formula blends in really pretty. These are really great neutral tones. I'm going to kind of neutralize this a little bit with my sponge because it's not meant to apply that much, but Lots of pigment, tap off your brush. I really like this blush color. Again, I feel like she normally, if you take a look in the other palettes, they're brighter cheek colors. And this is the only cheek color in that one. This is a brighter baby pink. So I really ha like that she added in this blush color. It has a rosy tone to it, but it's really pretty. And then we're gonna talk about the pop shade right here, which is a brighter shade. And what you're supposed to do with it basically is pop it right onto the apple of the cheek. And then that's gonna give it some good brightness right there. That's just the way Charlotte Tilbury recommends that you apply it. I normally don't apply it that way, but that is also very, very pretty. And these have a lot of pigment to them, but you can see they blend out really easily. Tap off your brush if you're intimidated by the color. Do you like the effect? that these gave my cheeks. Taking a look, they are definitely not flat, but they do have a satin finish to them on the skin. So it's not gonna be completely flat. I'm going to apply the highlight right here, which looks like a really pretty champagne color. Looks like that. And I'm gonna show you again in the Filmstar Bronze and Glow in light, how that would compare. So top, is definitely a little bit more champagne, a little, has some more gold to it as well. It's not as poppy as the Film Star Bronze and Glow. So I think it might be a little bit more natural, which is what I'm more into nowadays. So I'm using my Kaleidos H1 brush. Let's get in here. Yeah, so you see it's not giving me anything that's too white or too glowy. It didn't feel as creamy as the highlight in the Film Star and Glow as far as texture by that finger swatch, but it's applying really beautifully. So this does look nice. And it is a really good match with my skin tone because it's not too bright, but it's not leaving any sort of cast. So you're really only gonna see that glow when I turn my face, which is kind of what I'm into for highlights. I like that, that's really pretty. We're gonna move on to the eyes now. I'm gonna work out these creases. We're gonna start off with the number three shade, which is the smoke shade. Again, from the Sonia G Kiyaki set, I'm using the mini booster brush. I want to be pretty precise with this one. I'm happy that she added a shade that has a lot of depth to it. 
because in some of these palettes, I feel like she lacks depth with the eyeshadow. And for me, that's so important to transform a look. And it also would make the palette more versatile because you can also use it as an eyeliner. I'd like to see her do a palette that runs a little bit more neutral though, because this palette runs a little bit more of like a rosy, warm color story. I'm waiting for something a little bit more cool to neutral to come out. But we know Charlotte Tilbury is very repetitive here. But you can see her mattes are blending out really beautifully. They are quite pigmented. I'm taking my time to make everything look seamless. I'm gonna run it along the outer part of the lower lash line as well. And I'm taking my Rufford 27 brush and I'm blending out the edges. Very happy with that shade. I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna kind of follow through the three, two, one mark. So we're gonna go with number two. This is a Sonia G Jumbo Blender. I'm gonna put right in the center of the eyelid. It's nothing too blingy, but it does have definitely a shimmer to it. In Charlotte's typical recommendations for how to apply her shadows, she recommends this number two shade normally as a crease color. Don't be scared at the shimmer behind it. It's more so of a satin shimmer hybrid and it will look fine in the crease, but you definitely want to incorporate that matte color as well. But Charlotte's shimmers you'll find are usually pretty surprising at how good they look in the crease. This is really pretty. And this one is really going to amplify the rosy hues of this palette. With the Sonia G Flat Definer, we are going into the Brighten shade. And as you could have imagined, we are going to fill in this blank space right here so this one's going to add kind of that overall glow to the look also use your finger i'm going to show you for more of a pop just like that i'm actually going to go in with the number two shade a little bit more in the center of the eyelid i mean the look it creates is super pretty taking the flat definer brush again and i'm gonna fill in with that brighten shade right down here to give an awake look. So I only kept that dark color in the outer, I wanna say third of the lower lash line. And then I'm putting the glowiest shade on two thirds of the lower lash line. You see how that really creates an open eyed effect. I want to redefine the outer corner. I really love the look that this palette gives. If you're looking for some more inspiration of what other looks you could create, I do recommend playing around with adding the cheek colors into the look. Actually, let me show you. I'm going to use the Refer 27 Blender Brush. I'm gonna go into the pinky cheek color. And if you just apply this right out to haze the shadows, it's gonna pull the blush and the eyes together to make a more cohesive look. You see how pretty that is? But you can use these as eyeshadows. You can use this in the outer corner and then you can use the highlight all over the lid. You can just do a gray all over glowy eye look, put a little bit of the bronzer in the crease. There are more options than you would think. I'm going to go off camera and I'm gonna apply my Charlotte Tilbury Copper Charge Eyeliner, which is kind of a maroon, just to define the lash line and do lips. Then I'm gonna pop back on and we'll do lashes together. All right, let's do the lashes. I'm gonna show you the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes Mascara in action, which is the little bonus of this set. So I'm quickly gonna curl my lashes. I have been using the Refer Lash Curler. I really like it. It's a good one. Now, if you don't know, I always complain about my eyelashes. I do not have the best eyelashes, so mascaras don't really make that big of a difference on me. This mascara is good. I like it. I liked it better over time the longer that I had it, so I'm not gonna like this today because it's brand new. The wand here is very, very interesting. It's a rubber wand. I'm gonna get a good look for you guys, and you can see there's bristles really only on half of it, and the other half of it is flat. So the way that, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a while since I've used this. You really are supposed to use the flat side to apply the product and then use the bristle side to brush it out. I mean, that's a little too complicated for me. I just use the bristles for everything. So that's how I'm going to use it. It's a good little mascara though. I was pretty happy with it when I had my full size. So as far as how it holds the curl, no mascaras hold the curl for me. My lashes go super flat, so my curl won't hold. That's more so my lashes and not necessarily the mascara. And you can see this is one coat. It separated my lashes really, really nice. 
I'll be honest, I really don't love the wand on this, but here's how my lashes look. Very, very separating. Not my favorite mascara in the world, but it's nice. So I'm actually gonna put on some falsies though because your girl loves falsies. And I will be back for my final thoughts and then my comparisons. All right, so with lashes, as you can see, which makes the biggest difference, here is the final look. I absolutely love this look. I think it's a true Charlotte Tilbury aesthetic look. Bright, glowy, simple eyes blushed glowy skin. So as far as the palette, I really do love it. As per usual, this reached my expectations. I love it as much as all of my other ones. The only thing that I do wish, of course, is that they went with the layout of the Look of Love palettes. Now, as far as originality, I do want to quickly cover that. We know Charlotte Tilbury literally dupes herself all the time, and I'm going to be honest, this one is no exception. I do not have all of the Charlotte Tilbury Look of Love palettes. Like I said, I only got into them a few months ago, but I do have the Stone Rose Beauty, so I'm going to compare this. This I just brought with me on vacation, so I got a lot of use out of this. So let's take a look at them side by side. Here is the Sunset Dreamscape. Here is the Stone Rose Beauty. So the Stone Rose Beauty is a little bit more golden, and you can see the Sunset Dreamscape has a touch more depth to it as well, especially in the eye portion. So for that, I actually do prefer the Sunset Dreamscape because I find the shades to be a bit more versatile uh, as far as being able to get some depth. I like the neutral blush and having the bright blush as opposed to having two bright blushes. So for me, this one leans a little bit more towards the colors that I prefer for myself and I find more flattering. It also gives a little bit more of a rosy toned kind of look. It has a bit more warmth to it but I do want to compare so this right here is the dreamscape palette and right here we have the stoned rose beauty and you can see on arm swatches they are very very close. The shade that's going to make the biggest difference here in my opinion is this crease shade right here. I mean this totally transforms the look that you're going to get. But you can see it's all kind of the same shades but a little bit different. Blush of course is a lot more neutral like I said. The highlight in the Stone Rose Beauty is a little bit brighter. But yeah I will say with these arm swatches, they look very, very close. And that's the thing that I notice a lot with these instant look candle palettes. It's that it's a lot of the same shades, but just a little bit different. If you have the Stone Rose Beauty and you are debating whether or not you need the Dreamscape, I'm gonna say no, they're very similar. They give a similar look. If you're debating between one or the other though, I do prefer the Sunset Dreamscape a little bit more. I think that one is a little bit more versatile, but again, you don't need both. There is one that I prefer. So now I wanna take a look at the Sunset Dreamscape compared to the Glowing Beauty Instant Look of Love palette because I thought these ran similarly in depths as you can see, the layout is a bit different. I didn't bother swatching the number seven right here, which is the setting powder, because there's not one in this palette. But, you know, if you are on the deeper skin tone range and you have Glowing Beauty, I just want to show you how they would compare. So again, Sunset Dreamscape. Glowing Beauty. Now the Glowing Beauty also has some different textures right here, like, like we have this shimmer shade that doesn't want to focus. The depth shades right here are similar. You can see the bronzer is completely different. The Glowing Beauty right here is a lot darker. Um, I do wish that the Sunset Dreamscape did have a bit of a deeper bronzer because it's very, very light. Different tone of blushes, but similar depth level. And then you can see a deeper highlight. So these are very different. The Glowing Beauty is definitely more suitable for a deeper skin tone. They are different though, as far as textures, products, formulations. So I think those two are different enough. One more. I'm gonna compare to my favorite instant look in a palette. This is the Look of Love Pretty Blush Beauty. This is my all-time favorite. Um, and they really are not very comparable, pan to pan, as you can see. I would definitely say if you have the Pretty Blush Beauty, it actually might behoove you to pick up the Sunset Dreamscape because they're different looks. So these two are definitely the most different. And you could definitely pick up Sunset Dreamscape if you don't have it. Sunset Dreamscape, Pretty Blushed Beauty. You can see Pretty Blushed Beauty is overall brighter, overall cooler. Very different looks you're gonna get with these. The bronzer and the Pretty Blushed 
Beauty is a little bit cooler. The blushes are the most similar, I would say, but they're still different and the highlight's a lot lighter in Pretty Blush Beauty. But these two definitely, I would say, are the most different. As far as the most similar, the only one of what I have that I would say you probably shouldn't pick up is if you have the Stoned Rose Beauty. All right, you guys, there we have it. Those were my thoughts on the Sunset Dreamscape kit available now at Nordstrom for their anniversary sale if you are interested. Overall, I love the kit. I think it's beautiful. This is another palette that I'm very, very excited about. The mascara is eh for me, but I mean, I am loving my makeup look today. And as per usual, I think if you normally like this, these types of palettes, you will really enjoy this one. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.